I wanted to start this year off by getting back to the basics of personal finance because most of it just gets lost in the noise of everyday life. And when we forget these five frugal living basics, we walk into a world of unknown issues and unexpected expenses unprepared with no strategy. And unfortunately, the year 2020 was a prime example of that. So what I realized is this, I know that I love to address all these financial issues on my channel, but I feel like the way that I can better serve you is by really breaking down the basics of personal finance and dissecting it so that you can really understand how you should think about money. Hey, what's up? My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. Let's get into this video. There's five money rules that we all have to follow and they all build on each other to create a frugal, financially responsible person who is way ahead of the game. So at the most basic level, you've got to know your numbers. And I know that in itself sounds very basic and simple. I remember hearing that advice as a young 21 year old, just seeking advice on any and every YouTube channel. And when I heard that, I was like, well, duh, that's common sense, right? But the one thing I was forgetting is it's not one dimensional. Knowing your numbers goes far beyond knowing how much money goes in and out of your bank account every single month. It's understanding how much money you have left over after taxes at the end of every single month. It's understanding your rhythm. I don't know about you, but ever since I've been living on my own, I've just noticed that the first half of the month is where I spend majority of my money, period. And it's simply because of the fact that rent is due on the first and because most of my bills are due within the first 15 days of the month. Then the second half of the month is where I spend significantly less money and I can pretty much pocket almost an entire paycheck. That's just how it's been since day one. And see, that's what I'm talking about. When you get to know your numbers, you have to pick up on stuff like that. And if you haven't picked up on this yet, you will. See, some months are gonna be less expensive than others because there's gonna be holidays, birthdays, life events such as weddings, and you're gonna be spending a little more than you expect to be spending within those months. And you can actually plan for those. Those are just examples of what could happen in any particular year. Sometimes you might find yourself going out to eat a little more often than other months. Sometimes you might find yourself in the grocery store buying a lot more than you used to buy them because maybe you have guests over, maybe you have friends over that you want to entertain and you want to cook for. And of course, it's going to result in you spending more money than usual. And once you're able to really understand your financial rhythm and you're able to pinpoint exactly how much you spend at Walmart or Target, how much you spend at work on the vending machines or how much you spend on clothes, you really get to understand your money habits and how much they're actually costing you. But besides getting to know your spending habits, the real benefit of this is identifying your unnecessary spending. Like I guarantee you, if you're the type of person that likes to go out to eat a lot, I guarantee if you track how much you spend per month on that, you will look at the number and you will be embarrassed. I know I was. I was so devastated that I stopped eating out for two months straight. <laughs> and that's the point. We are so busy, life moves so fast that we just spend, spend, spend without even realizing how much we're spending. So who's to say that we're not spending almost as much as we're making? I mean, think about it. Let's be 100% honest and transparent right now. If you have money in your bank account and you're somewhat comfortable with what you have in your checking and in your savings account, it's going to be very easy to ignore the fact that you haven't added very much to it. The key word there is comfortable. See, in my opinion, the feeling of being comfortable is what puts people in their most uncomfortable positions in their lives. And it's all a byproduct of the decisions that they make due to the feeling of being comfortable. I really want you to understand that being comfortable triggers emotions like joy, bliss, and satisfaction. And whenever you make financial decisions based off of emotions, especially positive ones, it's almost always a bad financial decision. Why do you think people upgrade their entire lives once they get a raise or promotion at work? I mean, where they live gets upgraded, the car they drive gets upgraded, the food they eat, the clothes they wear, all of it gets upgraded because they're so happy to see their pay go up by 15%. Now there's an extra few hundred dollars on each paycheck because they went from $60,000 to almost $70,000 and now they're just in bliss mode and it feels like the possibilities are endless. And what that really boils down to is one thing, understanding what these numbers mean, which is why you gotta know your numbers to begin with. Because when you know your numbers, you know that $10,000 extra dollars a year is really only $7,200 extra a year after taxes, give or take, depending on where you live. And across 12 months, that's really only an extra $600 a month. So when you take that same $600 and you spend it on a new car that costs you, say, $500 a month, well, guess what? Boom! 
That's where your extra money is going. And you're treating it as if it's really $10,000 extra a year when really it's only $7,200 a year. There's a deficit between $10,000 and $7,200 a year. There's a big difference. That's what starts the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. And this could all be avoided by doing one thing that just so happens to pour into a million other things. And it's actually my favorite one, and that's constantly focusing on improving your financial situation. And I know that's a very broad statement, so I'm about to expand on it for you. This is thinking in terms of how can I make more money? How can I save more money? How can I spend less? How can I get out of debt in the fastest way possible? This is the heart of personal finance because this is where everything about your personal finances improves on a continuous basis and it requires an extreme amount of concentration. This is the exact reason why I was able to put together a side business and it costed nothing to start, yet it generated me an extra $200 every single month. This is what allowed me to pay off a third of my student loans while simultaneously building multiple emergency funds. Now, it definitely wasn't perfect. There was a lot of trial and error, but that is honestly where the magic happened. You see, when you're improving at something, you're always going to inevitably make some type of mistake somewhere, somehow, some way. And that's going to require you to make adjustments. And that's what I did. I made those adjustments. And I'll tell you this, the adjustments that I made went against the grain of what I was taught. And that's how I found out that it's more important to understand how you think about your own individual financial situation than to listen to general finance advice. And that's when I started to get cold. I started to question financial advice and the moment I started to think for myself, I saw firsthand that I was spending way too much money and throwing way too much money at rent every single month. I realized even that I was throwing too much money at my student loans. I had to dial that in because I was like, cool, I have $1,000 in my savings account and uh, I'm knocking out my debt at a very fast rate, but wait a minute, if I pay off all my debt right now and I only have $1,000 in my savings account and something happens, then I don't have anything really left over. This isn't even gonna cover my rent. Other things I knew I had to dial in was my financial goals because I always know that whenever you make a goal, you need to make a plan. And what I was doing, I was just saying, I wanna make more money this year. So instead of making a general statement of I wanna make more money this year, I made you know specific things for specific months. So I was like, okay, this is month October. In October, I wanna make $10,000 this month. How am I gonna get there? How close am I from it and how far away am I from it? And it was that mindset and that thought process that allowed me to put together a specific constructive plan on reaching that goal. And that was the exact reason why I was able to make over $12,000 in one month back in 2018. But more importantly, I gave myself a reason why. There was a reason why I wanted to hit five figures in one month for multiple months throughout that year. And I wanna do it every single year going forward. But the point is, I had a reason why. And I think that's the part where we all mess up at is where we don't give ourselves a reason why. We just arbitrarily assign ourselves a goal for the year. It might be to lose a certain amount of weight or, or whatever, but we don't have a reason why. Why do you wanna lose weight? Why do you wanna make more money? Is it for you or is it for someone else? Because if it's for you, that's going to make you go a little harder when you do it. So mine was specifically for me. I had a goal in mind that I wanted to reach. One thing I did when I realized I was making that same mistake is I made sure that every dollar I earned from that point forward had a purpose. You need to know where your money's going and why it's going there. It has to have a reason why. But you know what I was doing in the background? I was constantly, constantly focused on improving myself. And that's so much deeper than personal finance because it requires such a higher level of intentionality because you know something? If you can't improve yourself, how are you gonna ever improve your finances? Now this is gonna look a little bit different for everyone, but I'm gonna paint a quick picture for you of what it looked like for me. Now when I focused on self-improvement, I didn't focus on reading books and listening to podcasts. I think those are great places to start, but I learned this the hard way and listen to this because this is very, very, very important. When you overload on information, that does not improve anything. You've actually got to apply the stuff that you learn. So I focused on application. And for me, it was building the mental toughness to stick to my financial goals and plans that I set for myself. And that meant that I couldn't see my family or my friends as much as I wanted to, but I knew I had to make some sort of sacrifice. For me, I had to learn to say no over and over and over again. And I'm telling you what, that was a huge challenge for me. And that was saying no to overtime, no to my friends, no to my family, just saying no, 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 no. That had to become my favorite word because I did not know how to say it straight up and I had to completely understand and be content with the fact that some people will understand and some people will never understand but either way I had to do what was best for me financially 
And the key thing I want you to understand is this. It goes beyond finances because I just said that I also said no to overtime. So that frees up more time to what? To do things in life that I actually enjoy doing. You see, when you value your time like that, you're like, no, I could be spending my time doing something else, creating value somewhere else, making another stream of income somewhere else. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll get to that in just a second. But what this did is it built my confidence on something much more than just my past accomplishments, which, by the way, is an extremely shaky foundation to build your confidence on. It built on the fact that I knew my character. I knew that I was someone who wanted to always continuously improve at every aspect of my life, despite how good I might have already been. I've always been like that. I know I can always improve on what I'm doing. It built on my borderline obsessive determination for success in life. It built on my impact, the way I can impact a multitude of people. Now back to what I was saying before when I was getting a little ahead of myself, the biggest thing this did for me was once I built my confidence on all of these things, I came to the realization that I actually had a purpose in this world. And it's something that I never realized before. And I found joy and fulfillment in that purpose. I was able to add value and I continued to improve, always continue to improve within my purpose. And it didn't matter where I went, I had impact. And that subsequently led to me having more money in my life. And it gave me a really good sense of self-worth. And that's something I want to stress to you right now. I know you may have debt. I know you may have savings goals. And I know you probably have a clear plan on how you're going to get there and improve your financial situation. But I'll tell you this. There is nothing that has done more for my financial situation than figuring out a way to increase my income in such a way that I could control it. It's extremely empowering and rewarding. And you know what? It's not for everybody. I will never sit here and tell you it's for everybody because it's not. But I'll tell you what, it was for me because the moment I started pursuing my purpose in life, I started seeing more money. I started seeing more streams of income in my life. And I'll tell you something else. What that does is it produces an unshakable mindset, also known as the high value mindset. And mark my words, this is the mindset that changed everything for me and took me to the next level, not just in terms of money, but also in terms of my personal life, e everything, every aspect of my life. The moment that I developed this mindset, that was the moment when I knew when to walk away from a situation, when to take a risk. That was when I started truly understanding the value, knowledge, passion, compassion, and determination that I bring to the table. Tell me that's not cold. When you know your value and what you bring to the table, you'll walk away from a toxic situation just like in a relationship and you'll drop it like it's nothing because you know what you're worth and you know what you're not freaking deserving of. You know what I'm saying? In my case, I was working a job I hated, you know, the typical story of overworked and underpaid. No, I'm kidding. My story was anything but typical. But, you know, if you want to learn more about that and you're really interested in it, just check out the videos I made on my experience. Anyway, when I developed that mindset, that was the end of me tolerating any disrespect of any kind from anyone. That was the end of me doing something that I hated every single day without walking away from it in fear that, oh my gosh, I don't have anything to fall back on. That was the end of that crap. And it was the end of me busting my tail every single day and giving my all, giving my 110% to a place who would replace me in a heartbeat if they had a chance to. Before then, I was just on autopilot. I woke up went to work, went home. You know what I'm saying? I was basically just a walking zombie. Like I literally felt like I was a robot. That is until I woke up to the reality of my situation. Once I woke up, I gained the courage and confidence to do what I've always wanted to do. And part of that is making these videos right here. But it's also something I never would have done if I didn't gain the high value mindset because in order to completely change my situation and open up my free time, I had to move across the country in order to do what it is that I wanted to do. And that required risk. And since I've done that, I've really been able to increase my income and continue to focus on increasing my income and be fulfilled and happy within my life. And to that point of talking about risk, something that is marked as risky is investing. And legally, I can't give you investment advice, but I can give you my opinion. And in my opinion, you cannot go wrong with investing in yourself. And I see that it's hard for people to psychologically process the idea of investing in yourself because the thing is this, when you spend your money on something, especially if we're talking about hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars, you, you expect something tangible in return. But typically when you invest in yourself, something that you buy is not tangible at all. It's completely up here. And that messes with people, believe it or not. 
For example, let's say you started a YouTube channel just like I did, but you want it to grow and you're having a little bit of trouble helping it grow. So you find somebody who is very knowledgeable within the realm of YouTube and you want them to coach you. So now you have to pay money to get them to coach you. Now what you're paying for, you, they're going to charge top dollar, just know that. <laughs> but if you're going to get, if you're going to go that route, you have to understand you're not going to get anything tangible. There's no product. There's just information and direction on where you need to go to get to where you need to be. You're paying for that person's expertise, their years of knowledge, their trial and error, everything they had to learn, that's what you're investing in right there. That's where your money's going. So it, what it does is it fast tracks your growth within growing your YouTube channel. And you could apply this to anything. If you want to improve with your finance, if you want to if you want to better your budget, if you want to get out of debt faster, if you want to pay for someone's expertise on building a business, then these are realms that you go into okay, I'm going to invest my money on this person's coaching services on the chance that I will be able to improve and get to where I want to be. Because the truth of the matter is, if you want to get to where you want to be faster, you have to talk to this person because you don't, you're not just going to magically figure it out on your own. It took this person 10 years. You just started. You, you know what I'm saying? You, you get what I'm saying. So that's the mindset around investing in yourself. And I just so happen to think that investing in a coach is the best way to invest in yourself. That's just my opinion, though. And I probably said the word improve a million times in this video by now. So if you get anything out of this video, I really want you to get I really want you to get this. You need to focus on improving in every aspect of your life. If you're only focusing on improving one aspect and not the other, guess what? Nothing else gets improved and the habit of not improving in these other areas are going to pour over to this area, which happens to be personal finance. So please focus on improving everything. Now, again, investing in a coach can be very expensive, but you have to ask yourself this question. Am I willing to do the proper research on this person? Is this person credible enough for me to invest my money into? Are people that are pupils of this person, are they getting the results that I've been craving to get? If so, you should probably invest in them. And you know something else? You also got to ask yourself this question. Am I willing to take the risk of losing this money on the, on the chance that I might get to where I want to get? And I know that there's a risk that I might not get to where I want to be. You have to ask yourself these types of questions because these are the real questions that determine your why and if you really want to do what you say you want to do. If a price deters you, it might be because you don't have the funds. But if you have the funds and the price scares you, you really have to question, do I really want to do what I'm saying I want to do? Because the whole point of investing is you have to invest income that is disposable, meaning that you can spend money on it and if you lose it, it's okay. You won't, it won't affect your lifestyle. It might suck losing out on say $500, but guess what? Sometimes that's the risk that you have to take if you're going to get to the next level. And that's my whole point. That's why investing is, it's risky. It is. Investing is risky. What I do is I budget for a certain amount to invest every single month. This requires a special type of mindset because if you got to think the the person who wants to increase their income is not the average person. That's not the average way of thinking, period. So this is taking a step beyond that because this is the person that's wanting to increase their income, but they also want to invest in a coach so that they can further increase their income. So this is like two steps above average. You get what I'm saying? So not for everybody, but this is going in my, my basics of frugal living. And here's why. You might be thinking, Reggie, this has nothing to do with frugal living. This is anything but basic, to which I would say you're wrong because the whole point of frugal living is thinking about the future, okay? So if you're increasing your income right now while you're young or at least younger, then guess what? Your future is going to be taken care of. If you have the mindset of continuously improving you're going to always be around people who push you to do better, which therefore means your future is going to be set up for success, specifically financial success. And it may seem like everything but basic, but at the most basic level, this is how we've got to think about everything that we do. And this, there's levels to it. There's layers to it. There's, you know, more basic versions of what I'm talking about. Obviously, if I'm talking about investing in yourself, 
You don't have to go out and find a coaching consultant, right? You don't have to spend eleven, twelve hundred dollars on a few weeks or months of coaching. That's not what I'm saying. Investing in yourself could look like buying a book. It could look like buying an online course. Or if you don't even want to spend money, let's say you don't have money to spend on investing. Cool. Investing works both ways with time and with money. So you invest your time on, say, YouTube or you invest your time on TV or something that's going to teach you what you need to know. They could be investing your time in a public library and let's say you want to learn more about personal finance. So you read a bunch of personal finance books. That's an example of investing because you're not getting that time back. Or if you, or let's say you have a little bit of money to spare, well, that could be buying books and you can seek knowledge and information through reading books. Or you could buy an online course where there's a person teaching you through another side of the screen how to do something. It'll be a very general level and it's not going to be as specific as coaching. But my point is, if you can't afford a coach, I'm not telling you to go against the very ideology of frugal living and spend money that you don't have on coaching. What I'm saying is figure out a way to invest in yourself in such a way that increases your profitability because that is very frugal. I'll give you some more examples. You could be spending time with knowledgeable people who you know for a fact are good in the space that they're in. I could go all day, but I'm not. I have, I have other videos on this, so I'm going to let you check those out. But Here's the thing right here. One thing is for sure. None of this is going to just fall on your lap. I'm not going to wake up one morning to every book that you've ever needed to read ever so you can have the knowledge that you need in your space. That's not how it's going to work. You're not going to wake up to a financial coach that's like, hey, I'm here. What, what do you need? None of that's going to happen. You get what I'm saying? Like, you have to seek out these people and this information on your own accord. This is an above average level of thinking, but it starts at the very basic level. If you don't have it at the basic level, it will never get to the above average level. Now look, I know I've spent several minutes talking about focusing on your purpose and increasing your income, but that is the biggest takeaway that I have from the year of 2020. Look, there's people all around me and all around you who have had to only rely on one stream of income. They've only been able to rely on either their jobs, even a stimulus check, basically one source of income and only one source of income that they could rely on so that they could survive. Is that not scary? I challenge you to think differently and figure out a way that you can build another stream of income. And I know in this video, I made it sound a lot more complicated than it actually is. In reality, it's actually pretty easy. I even have two videos on how to build side hustles and other streams of income and one is online and one is just all inclusive you can it's stuff like cutting grass i'm not going to spoil the video for you go check it out after this but anyways this is year 2021 let's learn everything that we can possibly take from 2020 and and make something more out of it because you know we're not about to ponder on the problems of 2021 even though the issues aren't completely done yet we're going to continue to move forward and make more money and make ourselves better let's go that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryans, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.